Welcome back to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast, where we share experiences out in the field and educate others through landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more with photographers from around the world. Yes, and we have Gary Farber on and Noah Buchanan on the show today. Welcome, guys. Thank um, you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Glad yeah. to be here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're just going to talk about basically why we're all here today. Um, actually, in a hotel room of all places. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, uh, Couldn't pick a better place. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's common grounds, right, to meet up at. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're also going to dive a little bit into their photography backgrounds as well, because yeah. Gary's kind of yeah. starting into that, and Noah's been doing photography for a long time, so kind of dive into that as well. So, mm-hmm. awesome. um, yeah, first of all, I'll do um, Gary. Why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what this festival is and uh, what we're all doing here? So. All right. So the biggest week is a festival. It's been going on for about I think it's t- ten years. It's been going on. Uh, it's where um, um, photog- photographers, birders from all over the country and all over the world um, gathered together for this great festival. Um, what I really like about this festival, it's really, um, it's about a community, it's about a family, uh, where the other festivals are, are a little bit, this, but this is really more about, you can see the, the tightness, the, the bonding in this group and just the community that's really thing. And it also, this festival brings a lot of young, young, younger generation is that you don't really see um, at other festivals. So it's just really just incredible festival. You can make so many contacts um, with guides, leaders, um, just people, you, people of different ages. Um, it's just, it's just a really, really incredible festival. That's awesome. Yeah. And awesome. for those who don't know in the audience, um, what's what is your relation to the festival? Like, are you with a company or what's what are you involved with here? Uh, for those who don't, know, <laughs> for those who don't know me, um, I'm, I'm I'm with Hunts Photo and Video. Uh, we're a camera store based in Boston, and um, and I I actually learned about this festival. Um, pretty much uh, by searching the internet I, I, I learned about it and then I um, I picked I, I, I reached out to them made a contact and told them who it was and um, and that's the thing I know it I was here at the festival uh, but I mean the, for those who don't know about Hunts Photo Hunts Photo is a camera store we're based in Massachusetts um, we ship all over the country and really what I really focus on more than anything else I really focus on the relationship part of, 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 the, of, the, of the business and really try to be there for my customers at all levels at all angles and just being there it, it, it all angles that I can and really building a friendship building a partnership that's more important to me than just just trying to make a sale just to make a sale awesome yeah awesome well Noah go ahead and yeah introduce yourself uh, here. <laughs> yeah my name is Noah I've been working for hunts now for about six years been doing photography since I was 14 so going on 13 years now um photography has definitely always been a big passion of mine pretty much since i got into it and that's kind of how i wound up at hunts ultimately Uh, i was going to school in boston for two years actually for photojournalism uh, and then pretty much decided that photojournalism was not for me i was not going to be able to make a sustainable living doing photojournalism full-time so started working at hunts part-time while i was still going to school and ultimately came on full time and have been there now almost six years. It'll be six years this August. So uh, it feels like just yesterday that I started, but it's been great. I've been working with Gary for about four years now, uh, doing events, trade shows all over the country. This is my third time now with the biggest week, and just excited to be back here and hanging out with the two of you guys. Awesome. Oh, thank you. So what is what's kind of the draw to biggest week um, for photographers around the country? I mean warblers is probably the biggest thing the warbler migration that we have up here in northwest ohio is just unbelievable and that's something that i'm just starting to kind of come to the realization of now in my third year being here and getting more into the birding world Mm -hmm. um i think it's pretty spectacular um especially somebody being definitely more of a beginner birder Mm -hmm. um it's just a pretty amazing sight and people who are definitely more advanced than me I think it's even more incredible because they know so much more than I do, um, which is really cool. And just the excitement that you see in people here seeing some of these species is just not something that you get to see everywhere. Just how much excitement there is for birding and the outdoors and nature uh, and everybody's sharing that same passion here is is just really awesome. Yeah, Yeah. it's awesome. We'll, we'll cut this out. You've been doing good questions. I don't know. I don't know where to go. Talking more about festivals so far. Yeah, we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so, do you, does Hunts have a presence here at the festival, or are you guys um, kind of providing people with equipment, or what's your role here? 
Um, the role of the festival here is to um, we have a booth at the at the festival, um, and we 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 bring we invite different companies to come in like Sigma, Tamron, um, P Panasonic um, to, to to really be there. So people want to try something out, want to test them in the field. They have the ability to go see a vendor, test it out, um, use it for a day, try the gear out. Um, and if they're interested in making any purchases, they go to do, they go to our booth to make the purchases. Um, we also I also try to if, um, for this festival I always try to um, have extra things on hand like extra batteries, memory cards, or lens cap if someone loses their lens cap on the boardwalk, or you know, or <laughs> anything like that. I try to have the necessary nest, nest, stuff on hand so people to have it right there thing. So, yeah. um, but we're really there just to, uh, at the festival to provide to be a service mm -hmm. to the thing and talk to people, build relationships, and, and, and make new contacts. Um, yeah. Anything, no? You want, anything no, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're here just to support the birding and photography community um, as best we can, be here to provide gear, knowledge, um, and any services that we can provide to help everybody out who's here attending the festival and help them make the most out of it, help them take better photographs, and whether that be through education out in the field doing trips or selling them a new camera or a new lens. Um, it really just comes down to supporting the photography and birding community. Cool. Yeah, so in this, it's been, the festival's been going on for two and a half, three days. How many questions would you guys say you've gotten? Like hundreds <laughs> at this point? Like, I'm sure you get a lot at that optics booth. And yeah, I mean, people are coming by constantly asking questions mm -hmm. about cameras, photography yeah. equipment, mm -hmm. even accessories for people who are not photographers, people who are just birders looking for a new tripod for their scope or uh, maybe a new strap for their binoculars. So um, we get a lot of questions throughout the day. Um, and it's something that I enjoy because I just love talking photography, especially gear. I'm definitely a bit of a gear nerd myself. Um, yeah. So I definitely like nerding out about mm -hmm. gear with our customers. And awesome. I think I can bring that kind of excitement mm -hmm to the conversation and make them excited about it as well. Yeah. So yeah, we get hundreds of questions a day easily yeah. <laughs> um, through the amount of people that come in through that tent and the eight hours where they're every single day. There's a lot of conversations, yeah. uh, a lot of questions being asked and um, it's a little overwhelming at first, especially mm -hmm. when I did it for the first time, but now I've kind of gotten used to it. Yeah. But for somebody who's never been here before or been in this environment, it can definitely be a little overwhelming, but it's it's a really fun at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, one it's, it's, one thing we try to do at the um, at the different festivals or pretty much all the trades. I've talked a little about this with Henry at, on um, some of his Zoom sessions he's done with hunts, but um, we try to uh, if people come in looking for gear, we try to um, really. Um, fit with what's going to fit for them what's their budget um we talk a lot about some people really think you need to buy like a get invest in a long lens a 600 millimeter lens and spend 13 dollars 13 dollars 13 thousand dollars to get the best shot yeah. it's really that's not really the thing the best thing is knowing your equipment knowing how to use it and and you know, yeah. knowing your settings on the camera and really what we try to do at all the festivals we try to really um figure out what the customer is looking for what they're looking to do and find and find the right thing for that we're yeah. never going to try and oversell so oversell someone something that they don't really need so that's something we really take pride in trying to do yeah i think that's a strength of this festival too is the diversity of people you got people just getting into photography and you know they they don't know those things so it's great you advise them there um it was just kind of kind of cool to see too on the boardwalk i thought it would be all professionals you know with like the big lenses but mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of beginners almost more beginners than professionals so yeah. it's interesting mm -hmm. Like you said, it's different from yeah. the other festivals there. So. Yeah. And what we're seeing now, actually, a lot of what we, we saw, like, probably when it first started, a lot of the birds did not have cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And now, in the last couple of years, more yeah. and more birds are actually getting cameras. Um, and they, I think they're getting cameras, correct me if I'm wrong, no, but they're getting cameras to, like, identify the bird, or ID the bird. That's yeah. why the I birds mean, are getting it. That's mm -hmm. definitely how they're getting into it. And I think through that, they're getting more excited about photography and are investing more money and more time into it. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, a lot of these birders are just wanting to capture what they're seeing or try to ID something that they may not be able to do so just by quickly looking at it through a pair of binoculars or yeah. a scope. So that is something we're seeing more and more of now. And I think you said correctly, there's probably more beginners out there than there are mm -hmm. amateurs or professionals. Um, a lot of, I think birding surprisingly is a rapidly growing activity hobby yeah. mm -hmm. um 
lifestyle, whatever you may want to call it, which I think is great. And I think more and more people are sharing that appreciation for nature and the outdoors, which at the end of the day, I think is pretty awesome. So yeah, I definitely see a lot of beginners out there as well. Sure. Yeah. I think we saw a really big burst in, uh, in uh, people getting into photography and the bird is during the pandemic when mm -hmm. people were just stuck in homes. Yeah. They really wanted to be outside, do something. and. Um, and that really you know, type of thing. I know like a lot of binocular companies, their their business, they were, their one company that business just totally just boost stormed. You couldn't find a binocular in stock. It was, um, but a lot of people got into birding during the dur during the pandemic and just fell in love with it and and, and continued to do it today. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I've yeah. seen a few of them in there. I mean, I've seen even, even your work, Henry, from your first time. Now you've improved. You. Uh, you've improved to night and day. Uh, yeah. I've seen so many people like that, <laughs> and, and it, it, it's just incredible to see to, to see. These type of young generation getting into it and just doing yeah. unbelievable work. It's neat because birding is like so accessible too. Like mm. you can just start with just binoculars yeah. and that's it. But then mm. you can upgrade and get better cameras. But you don't need much to really get started. Yeah, yeah. The the barrier is pretty low. It's really accessible to anyone, really. I mean, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. You can be a, a young child looking through a pair of binoculars <laughs> to enjoy it, which I think yeah. is really cool. Mm -hmm. it's, there's not many things that can be enjoyed at such a wide age mm -hmm. range from yep. so little to so old. Right. And I think that's really cool that this is something you can literally do until the day you die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at whatever you pace you want. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You can't say that about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Age will definitely limit you in yeah. a lot of things, but going out and, and bird watching is not one of them, which is pretty cool. I won't be able to get eye level forever. <laughs> no, I know. No. <laughs> I learned that over the I past few days. I get all my images now. <laughs> <laughs> it's I still think, awesome. I think most people pretty much start out doing a bridge camera, and they get some incredible yeah. work with bridge camera. Then they, then oh, they yeah. think. But, um, you want to explain what that is for the audience who may not know? No, you, you're the expert. Yeah, okay. so uh, <laughs> a, a bridge camera is a type of point and shoot camera um, it's kind of a bridge between a point and shoot and a dslr or a mirrorless where it has a fixed lens which means you cannot physically take the lens off the camera it's all one piece okay. but typically that lens has usually an extraordinary zoom capability usually 60 times zoom and higher um, a lot of them will zoom much further than any DSLR or mirrorless lens will get you, <laughs> which I think is pretty cool because they're in such a small compact package that anybody's able to go out and use these cameras and capture some pretty great shots um, with not a lot of experience. And it's really a way, I guess, to kind of bridge the gap, if I want to be cliche, uh, into more advanced photography. And I think bridge cameras in a way are becoming more popular again. Uh, for a while when smartphones became more, I think accessible and more people started having smartphones and taking photos with their phones, the kind of point and shoot and bridge camera market slowed down. But I think a lot of people now are reappreciating bridge cameras for their capabilities for birding and nature photography um, and making it so easy and so accessible to everybody. So yeah, bridge cameras are really cool. Um, there's a lot of different options to choose from. Uh, anything from the lower end to a couple hundred dollars up to a thousand dollars and more. So there's really a lot of options out there for anybody in any type of budget that you may have. Hmm. Person that's actually doing some incredible work um, with a bridge camera. He shoots with Nikon P1000. His name is Simon Tolzman. Um, and he does, if you look at his account, um, his, his all his stuff is done. That's when he shoots all his stuff, but he's, yeah. he's producing the, some incredible work. Yeah, mm. you get so much closer than anybody else. I mean, mm. with that zoom, that's amazing. So. Mm -hmm. He's doing everything from macro to bird. What else is he doing? All Landscape, I mean, I've seen him do a little bit of everything. And it's really a versatile piece of equipment for somebody who may not have the money to invest in a bunch of lenses. This will do everything from landscape, portraits, macro, birds, astrophotography, a, a little mix of everything yeah. all in one. And I think that's really cool. cool. And sure, it may not give you the best image quality, but it's gonna give you some pretty good image quality that I think most people will be happy with, especially yeah. if all you're doing is sharing it on social media and online, it's gonna be pretty impressive, so. And he's actually leading a workshop this week, right? Is he, he is, where, where, yeah. where is he, where, 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 where are you doing a workshop? Right yeah, so Simon and I are leading a couple of workshops this week, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we're actually doing three of kind of the main hot spots, McGee Marsh, uh, we're doing Metzger Marsh, and then we're doing the Mommy Bay Boardwalk as well. So hitting awesome. those three hot spots uh, over the course of the next weekend, which will be really fun. Cool. Um, 
two morning ones and we're doing one afternoon workshop awesome. as well. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So kind of switching gears here. Um, so both of you uh, are into photography at um, different levels. So we'll go ahead and start with Noah here. Um, so how how did you kind of get into photography? Yeah. So, I mean, the photography that I got into is widely different than what I'm doing now in many ways. But I got into photography when I was a freshman going into sophomore year of high school. Um, I grew up skateboarding and kind of doing a lot of action sports and was definitely never the best out of my friend group. So I always kind of felt like I was kind of behind the scenes a lot and that kind of interested me in filming and taking photos of my friends skateboarding and doing all this stuff. And that's when I got my first camera and that's kind of really when I got into it and started taking a couple of photography classes in high school, um, took a senior year credit at a community college doing photography. And I felt like I was already more advanced than all the other people in that class and just kind of expanded everything I was doing. Um, from the action sports, I kind of moved towards more team-based sports. I grew up playing a lot of sports. I played hockey for 12 years. I played volleyball for three years in high school. Um, so I was always big into team sports when I was younger, and now I don't play any team sports. But um, <laughs> at the time, it was something I was super passionate about. So that's what I started photographing, were just things that I was passionate about. And that's the same to this day. I photograph things that interest me in my own personal life outside of photography. Um, and over the past five, six years, that's been nature, outdoors, um, mountain biking, snowboarding, and most recently, birds and wildlife. Um, I think I've just been so inspired seeing so much of amazing work from photographers from all over the country doing just some incredible wildlife and nature photography that's really inspired me to get out and do it. And it's something that anybody can do in their own backyard, which I think is really cool. Um, you don't have to go far to just go out and take photographs of wildlife and animals. So I think, again, as we were talking earlier, that a lot of people kind of got into birding over the pandemic. I was definitely one of those people as well, spending a lot of time at home, not traveling as much doing photography. Um, I just started doing more and more nature and wildlife in kind of my local area. And it's kind of progressed from there. Um, but for me, photography has always just been a personal thing, something that I enjoy just doing for myself. And I like going out and photographing things that just interest me, things that inspire me. And at the end of the day, I think that's what's so cool about photography. It's just something that you, just another way of expressing yourself and another creative outlet that we can all take advantage of now. And I think the fact that photography is so accessible now to everybody is really a great thing and as much as it has hurt the photography industry i think it's also helped it in many many ways um and everybody gets to share that appreciation for photography and i think that's really cool yeah. so. well gary uh, <laughs> me you're, you're, I... you're a little bit newer to photography so yeah <laughs> it'd be I... interesting to hear your uh, perspective on how did i get him talking i know yeah. oh my gosh gotta go way back. where do we start i know here we go um <laughs> People ask me all the time, you know, people, I've been in the industry for 20 years, people that were so shocked that I never really did pictures and stuff like that. Um, I actually asked a trivia question one time. Um, one time they asked me, um, I asked somebody, what's the first camera I ever picked up? And it was a, a disposable camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, that's the first thing I shot with. But all things in the last year and a half so, um, I just really, I, when I stepped up my Instagram page and my social media page, I was looking at all the amazing work from incredible photographers from all over the country and all over the world and that just really inspired me to go out and, and try to do photography um so that's what really that's really the big thing that inspired me to go out and do it and then um, um i in the last six months i tested all different type of cameras from nikon to fuji um to olympus um and all things and i finally um went with a went with a sony um camera I'm very happy with it. I bought the um, Sigma 105 Macro and the Tamron 15500, uh, I, and I love it. And I um, think I've been on like four or five trips since then. Uh, I've been to the Everglades. Um, I've been to um, um, I've been I've, I've been to um, uh, Nashville, Ten Nash Nashville, Tennessee, Chicago, um, Bosky, Dalaposky, um, and a few other places. But I just really loved. I've tried everything from wildlife photography to macro to food photography um, to 
to to um, to sports to to all, I probably covered like seven or eight different things, and I just I just really fall in love with it. I think my right now my still my favorite I keep going back is wildlife photography is my number one, um, sports photography is probably number two, and macro photography is number three. Um, but as far as again photography wise, what it's done for me on a personal level is allowed me to um, really. Um, just sit back, relax, and, and, and it's, a, it's a way to have relaxation. And um, really just also just to clear my mind and just, just, just shoot. I find when I'm shooting, I'm out with friends, I'm really, I get the phone away, I, I put the phone away down, and I'm not on my phone, and I'm just really out just having fun and, not, and, and just relaxing and just really caption, caption shot. So that has been a really great part of how I got into it. And I just absolutely love doing it. And, it's, it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a new hobby for me. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think you'll uh, stick with kind of the multi-genre approach for a while, or do you think that's something you want to keep doing, just shooting all different kinds of things? Um, I think, yeah, I definitely want. To, I like the variety of stuff. I like doing different subjects. I think by by doing that, it allows me to learn different learn different type of techniques, how to do things, and just I like variety and stuff. Like that so I'm definitely going to stick to um to to doing it. The other thing it's allowed me to do is really um. Is, is also know the equipment, know the equipment a little better, know how to, how to use certain things, know settings and things like that. And it just allowed me to better have, under, um, talk a little more to the customer about the, the gear and stuff like that. And that has really that has really helped. But that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it just because of passion and love. But <laughs> yeah. it, right. I, I picked up other interests along the way by, by doing it. Yeah, I'd imagine it helped your job in a lot of ways too. You yeah. know, I'd be like, I actually use this gear firsthand or something, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's um, great. But it's 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 given it's given a whole different perspective how I how I do things. So it's I'm, I I could not be happier. That's yeah. Awesome. 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 Did you feel like you had any kind of head start at all with like knowledge of settings or anything when you? You got into photography for the first time from your experience at work. Um, I don't know. I, to tell you the truth, I think I, that was a, I, something I had to really pick up. Okay. Um, but I, what I think I what I did pick up, I think really good. Um, I have never really compared this. No, I have really said never said this to you, but I know of, in some of my shots, you 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 see, I like really t I, one of my best shots. I like taking really thinking of all type of things. I really like taking portrait shots. Mm -hmm. um, when you see the stuff of the eye, the bird, and stuff like that, I yeah. really type. I really think I think that I think that I picked up that pretty quick. Because when I was young, I was playing basketball, and um, it was like I could consider taking the the bird shot is like shooting free throws. And if you if you you know shoot the free throw, you look at the shot, you look at the eye of the shot, you get that thing. So I yeah. take the process of shooting free throws and huh. taking the portrait shot. Oh, that's awesome. um, yeah, yeah, portraits are hard at first when you're starting out. So that's that's great you're already getting those. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. that in particular, I was looking at your page before we recorded tonight. Um, your wood store kind of backlit portrait. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorites. That's that's a great one there. You want to go into a little bit of the story there because that, that probably took some, some sneaking up to get there <laughs> um, well thank you so uh, much i appreciate yeah. that um I'm, i honestly don't know how i got that could have been luck i really don't know how i got that um no any thoughts no i mean that was an awesome shot i mean i was impressed when i was looking through your photos and saw that wood stork in there and in that really nice kind of soft backlit mm -hmm. lighting like that was like a very advanced image okay. and mm -hmm. yeah, I was great. definitely impressed by that mm -hmm. and I think it's definitely one of your best photos and really yeah. kind of represents that more portrait style mm -hmm. bird photography that you're talking about and mm -hmm. I think if you can kind of take what you did there and apply that to more imagery mm -hmm. it's just going to continue to get better and better yeah. but yeah that was an amazing wood shot. Thank that, you. That was in Florida I assume right? That was in Florida awesome. yes yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I have learned about photography um, we talk about I've looked I've ta I've heard a lot about that on different sessions, but you really have to have patience, um, and mm -hmm. and that's I I didn't I've heard about it, but I didn't really realize until I actually did it. Um, but I'm at I, I there are some spots photography when I do photography that I'm actually will sit in a spot for like 10, 15 minutes in that one spot before I move, and just like I'll, sometimes I'll take like three hundred shots of the same thing, yeah, and um, right. just to try to that's make awesome. sure I have the thing. Um, but that's something that's really I've learned. The patience, um, you know, if you're shooting birds, I've heard a lot of you, a lot of you, Henry, and so many other people talk about getting an eye level, the bokeh on the shot. Uh, <laughs> so it says my level. You know, <laughs> um, you yeah, yeah. yeah I've never, I never, I still, still forget what the bird, uh, maybe Henry, you could tell, I always hear you guys talk about skittish. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, no. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys talk about it all the time. Yeah, it's uh, not really a problem here, but everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's um, true. But yeah. so I've, all those things that I've learned yeah. on the Zoom things, all sad and things, um, I've tried to think of that in my mind while I'm shooting and try to and, and try to capture that and yeah. do that while, while I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. 
You yeah. done any uh, warbler stuff here so far at the marsh or anything? Honestly, so far I've not done any photography. Okay. Um, but I plan on I do plan on getting out. Um, you know, in the middle of this week and stuff. And start doing some stuff. But yeah. I definitely want to try to catch warblers. I, 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 One thing I find shooting small birds is really, really tough. That's something I really mm-hmm. haven't captured. I, that's where a binocular comes in in place because if you don't have the, you know, if you, it's very hard to see from the camera, at least for me, maybe as Ill, in time and experience, I'll probably type it to do that. Yeah. But that's where I see a binocular coming in, really yeah. trying to do that and then de- de- taking the camera to do that. Right. Yeah, I think it actually requires even more patience too with the small birds. Mm-hmm. They just yes. keep bouncing around. You gotta wait for the right perch. Yeah. 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 And you really have to like track them with your eye and everything. And that just takes lots of practice, I think, right. too, with um, them. Yeah. How long did it take you to? To master, uh, I'll I'll like master it. Now master you feel like you mastered it. You don't feel like you mastered, <laughs> mastered it. But Close enough. The only, it really took me a year and a half to actually be able to photograph small birds. It was only like January of this year. That was with my new camera too. That I was really only able to photograph them. Like I developed the patience and it just it's small birds are a whole other deal. I mean, yeah, it's so tiny. It's basically macro photography effectively. It's just. Mm-hmm. In a way, with a longer lens, so, yeah. yeah, it takes a, it takes a long time. It's, I think it's yeah. just all about starting with like your your common like your backyard uh-huh. birds, like a robin or something, yeah, yeah. you know, a chickadee, and then just going like warblers are a whole different level. Right. They're much more just bouncy and mm-hmm. energetic. But you know, so, how long have you actually waited? To, what's the most you waited to oh, to, 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 to be patient for a shot? Uh, I, well, recently um, in Florida, I would wait for the shorebirds to come around the bend. Mm-hmm. Waited an hour once, and it was worth it. They circled around me, like literally came around to me. Mm-hmm. It was a circle of sh- shorebirds around me, so I had <laughs> plenty of options. Um, I, I wait a long time now. Um, I'm still a little impatient. Like mm-hmm. I, there has to be something in the area, something mm-hmm. around. I got to be hearing something. Something I also struggle with is the auditory cues to work on that. But I at least have to hear some kind of bird um, to wait in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if it's there, I'll wait like 20 minutes. Maybe mm-hmm. there's a good perch, but. It's hard. It's it's. I can get really impatient. So. What about you, Ryan? Oh, I mean that. I've I don't really wait that long. I'm usually pretty mobile, you know. Like I'm not one to wait in a blind. So I mean, like you know, I've waited an hour, probably hour and a half or something. I mm-hmm. um I can't think of any particular off the top of my head, but um I know we're going to talk about a few later episode of our like recent experiences. But yeah. we just did a spotted sandpiper session. Mm-hmm. Probably like what? That was a lot of waiting. Mm-hmm. That was like. Felt more like 45 minutes yeah yeah. you know but we're yeah, laying so down we, like the sand and everything and just like and it was like late afternoon light but mm-hmm. i mean like just waiting for it to come around the edge yeah, we would time of around like, the mud flat so it'd come around the curve and wouldn't see yeah. us so. yeah and but, it worked it came right up mm-hmm. to us so yeah. well, was, i mean i can wait 25 minutes but i don't think i have patience to wait an hour <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe soon right. but. If you, you want to go out shooting with us later you know you totally could sometime yeah, yeah. We'll take yeah. you out to some of these areas get you those shots mm, it's fun to, sure it's better to wait I, I don't know if you found it. it's better to wait when you have a friend with you just even if you're not talking yeah, yeah. it helps yeah. just like you're not suffering inside so, <laughs> sharing yeah. the suffering together yeah, yeah. <laughs> i find actually when i'm doing i'm curious what your ryan and your thoughts are but when i'm I, when i'm doing photography i like i like going with friends to do photography i don't really like doing photography myself at least not yet but i like going with people and going to shoot and stuff like that but when i'm actually doing the shooting I like I find myself like just like I want to shoot by myself yeah. and like focus on my shot and not like shoot you know with friends yeah. I like to kind of like separate you know sure. something yeah. and then come back afterwards but do, when you find doing shooting do you when you're shooting with friends do you find doing the yeah. same thing like really like trying to focus on yourself and be uh-huh. you like to have your like a game face on like being mm-hmm. serious like you're all type of thing or how, how do you do it so Ryan and I are trying to be careful um, there's a couple times where we've literally gotten the exact same shot yeah, so sure. we try to you know, shoulder to shoulder <laughs> yeah. I know. and I go like you better not uh-huh. share this later uh-huh. yeah let's yeah. coordinate <laughs> yeah we try to get different angles um, and we also try to be conscientious of like bumping into each other or blocking each other because uh-huh. with a telephoto just like if your arm just a piece of your arm mm-hmm. is near it you could pick up the entire arm and ruin the shot so mm-hmm. we've probably walked into each other's shots no uh-huh. doubt you know yeah. it's happened before but I enjoy it it's great it's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. good when you're that in between time like you said and then we kind of go our separate ways when the yeah. subject's there so, yeah, at least yeah. me up at the same location, then kind of just yeah. you know, break off and do uh-huh. some, sort of separate things. I like guess, today with the, with the trumpeter know. swans, like yeah. um, we parked the car, Ryan stayed in the car, mm-hmm. got like grass angle foreground blur, mm-hmm. and then I went way down to the creek and laid mm-hmm. eye level on the rocks, and just completely <laughs> different shot there. So. Yeah, yeah. And he definitely, he, you expose more bright, I expose more dark, so mm-hmm. there's a difference there too. 
Yeah, definitely. But I've noticed like when I'm shooting, like find myself to be like really like like I'm when I'm shooting, I find myself to really be focused, like being right. serious. Like I have like I'm playing like a um, game seventy B finals. I feel like I'm like I'm like I have like <laughs> I'm like real focused, real serious. Like I'm like I'm, I want to get that shot. Yeah, it's like I be, I, I just get really focus on trying that's the best part i say you yeah. know you get so honed in you forget everything else and when i do that i, I just like i just when i'm doing the focus I, I just i just i don't think about anything else i don't think about my work i don't think of anything mm -hmm. i'm just like just focus on that just throwing in it's, it's, it's yeah that's uh, awesome yeah it's, that's, it's great you can achieve that so early into photography too yeah 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 it wasn't for me at first i i frustrated a lot at first and didn't really enjoy it as much and it took a while to really start yeah. to get passionate for it so. yeah yeah and going, going back to shooting with friends or people you know, it's like it's really great to like get a good story, you know, you share it together right. and you know, tell the experiences yeah. later. And it's one thing if you're on your own, but like when you really share it with people, I think it's really cool. You know, it's great to tell experience story with different people, tell you different things. Everybody has a different different side how they do things, different perspectives. It's nice to have people um perspective how they how they do photography and and and, yeah. and, and how they and how they got the yeah. job. And it's interesting to see how people mesh well. You know, I've kind of learned yeah. things about you and how you shoot versus yeah. how I do it. Uh, I love it. Yeah. I mean, I do it a lot too, but you do it to like the end. It's inspiring to say I'll the least. I'll do anything to get the shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, besides disturbing the. As animal. long as, as, long yeah. as ethics. As long as the right oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will do, I'll do anything. I'll put myself in any position to get the shot. Yeah. 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 Water, yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. Kind of uh, moving into another question here, and we'll start with Noah here. Um, what's kind of a personal photographic goal? For this year that you you have i don't know if it's necessarily photographic um, but i guess it does relate to photography in general um, i guess the first thing that came to my mind is just bird id um, mm -hmm. and just knowing my species better and knowing what i'm mm -hmm. photographing we were at dinner earlier tonight and we were talking about this and it's like i feel like i can capture pretty good bird photographs but uh, half the time i have no idea what i'm photographing and mm -hmm. i feel like it's halfway there like i'm not getting that full yeah. image when i don't know what it is and and i think in some ways that's something that is just going to take time and that's i think frustrating to me that i know so much about photography that this is so new to me that it's frustrating in a way mm -hmm. um that i always feel like i'm somebody who likes to like when I get into something, I definitely like dive into it full on and like to know everything about it. So when I start off something, I just like almost get obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. um, whether that be really anything in life. I mean, sports, um, mountain biking, just biking in general. I mean, photography, like once I find something I'm interested in, I definitely kind of get a little obsessive over it. So um, I would say bird ID, but that's not, I guess, specifically photography. Um, I think just more nature and wildlife photos that I'm just excited about and um, more stuff local to home too. I want to explore more locally. Um, I just moved a couple of months ago um, more into nature um, just outside of the White Mountain National Forest in Maine um, and we have a ton of wildlife up there and just excited to explore and photograph that I think is probably the, the awesome. most excited I'm really looking forward to. So. How about you, Gary? Um, I, I think for first thing about my goals of photography, I think one, number one is to master my camera um, and and really learn every single setting of it, so I know how to use it better. Uh, I think that's number that's my number one goal. Um, my number two goal is to really um, is to to, go, to try to travel around the country um, to different spots around the country that I really want to go to. Like I really want to go shoot in Arizona, um, and there's, there's there's other places I want to go to. Um, to South Carolina and shoot and, and shoot in South Carolina, um, and there's several other places I want to go, different places to shoot. Um, also, it'd be it's, I'd like to go and meet up with my customers and, and, and you know and meet my customers and, and go shoot with them. That's another really yeah. experience that I really love to do. Um, so that's really the, my big goal is really master the camera, knowing how to use it, and continue to travel around the country and visit beautiful places around the country to, mm -hmm. to, to shoot to shoot and, 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 meet, and meet up with people. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, when, when you say mastering your camera, do you mean more like the specific buttons or more like the aperture, ISO, shutter speed? Um, more like um, aperture, shutter speed, um, all the buttons, knowing all the features of the okay. camera, um, from all the type of things you can do. I think if I learn that, that's going to allow me to improve even more as a photographer and, um, and, and, and just, you know, improve dramatically. I think, so that, I think that's my biggest thing I need, I need to do. And once I do that, I think I'll be able to even yeah. continue my growth. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you still in the stage of auto mode photography? 
I'm still on the stage of shooting you on on a mold. Um, actually, I'm shooting a little bit with, with, with um, Shadow Priority. Oh, nice. Um, so I've just started doing that. Um, <laughs> Next, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. next up up at least. Yeah, right? yeah. I also like to do, um, you know, when I'm shooting, I like to I like to put it on fast on, on burst, so I, yeah. it's really fast. Yeah. If you asked me that three three weeks ago, I would not know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Single shooting this burst, yeah. fly away. Yeah. Like, uh, I would not even know where to shut up after it three weeks ago. Um, oh, but yeah. uh, thanks to some of you guys and other people that have awesome. that have learned, I, I I I'm slowly picking some of those things up. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, but that's kind of what, what I'm looking to do is. You'll be, you'll be a master in two years. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I've already gotten people ask me. I've already gotten people asking if I'm going to do workshops, but I told them I'm not. I'm not. At least right yeah. now. No? I could ask. If you have, have me back on in a year, maybe it'll change, but I don't know. But, <laughs> um, right now, I'm really doing this purely seriously. I'm just doing this for, for the love, passion. Awesome. I'm not doing this for making any money. I'm not doing this for anything. It's really just the love, passion. Yeah. just the thing. I don't. Right now, I don't plan on doing any workshops. I'd rather leave the workshops to you, to you, Henry, and all the other people, yeah. <laughs> and refer them to you and other people, and you know, and that's all I say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, well, uh, I think that's that's probably a good place to conclude it today. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys for coming on. What are, what are the best platforms you can plug hunts or your personal social media? What's the best places to? Yeah, uh, you can check out hunts at huntsphoto.com. Uh, Instagram is huntsphotovideo, and then huntsphoto and video on Facebook. We also have a YouTube channel too. So pretty much all social media platforms, you search huntsphoto and video, and it'll come up. Um, personal accounts. Uh, my Instagram is Noah Buchanan with just an underscore at the end. Um, that's where most of my nature and bird photography is. Um, yeah, those awesome. are the best place to keep up with me. Cool. And you can follow me. My um, I'm on Instagram G Five Thirty Three. And if you're on Facebook, um, my Facebook is my Facebook is Gary Faber. Um, but those are my three, those are my two social media things. So that's where you, that's where you can follow me and keep and keep up with what I do. Awesome. awesome. So, thanks thank so much for coming thank, on. thank you yeah. Gary no. thanks for having us you guys it's been fun it's been great hanging out with you and uh, I think it's time to head off to bed and do some more burning <laughs> early I know, tomorrow yeah. bright and early <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you enjoy our photography studio here yeah, yeah. Studio. <laughs> sound treated and all so. yeah thank you guys well, thank you guys yeah thank you awesome. uh, thank you for having us on of course and, and yeah. thank you guys keep up the great work I love I love what you do so thank, thank you thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast you can find us on Spotify Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.